So I'll be able to shuffle in. In this video, we're going to talk about Man at Arms and Crusader. The reason I want to do some kind of juxtaposition is because the game or the DLC has been out for a few days now. And a lot of people are thinking that the reason Man at Arms got nerfed was to make it so Crusader wasn't outclassed. And I'm going to talk about what each character does and specializes in, what they're for, you know, do a little kit breakdown and give my own thoughts, but I'm hoping to at least address some of these ideas because I, I think they're personally worth talking about. So we'll start with Crusader. And Crusader is primarily a support. He's a very flexible support, but he is primarily a support. He has decent damage options, especially with the crush nerf. You know, we have Smite that does okay damage. He has Stunning Blow, which arguably isn't as good as Rampart. We have, a, he has two cleaves, actually. And Man Arms has none of those. And he also has a Stress Heal that's pretty good. He has Holy Lance. He has a lot of group buffs, self buffs. He can heal. And he has a lot of stuff going on. The other thing with Crusader 2 is that all of his paths do change up what he's doing. So Wander is just kind of the the general character, you know, the jack of all trades. I hate that term, but everyone knows it, so we'll use it. Aggressor is the, if there's burn, I execute path, and I want to hit stuff with my, my two melee attacks, primarily. And then you have tenacity, which also gives them some uh, sustainability. So he really wants burn characters with him. Man Arms doesn't have a path or whatever where he wants burn characters with him. Then we have Templar, which is his tank path, and this makes him a little more sustainable. You know, he can lower his own stress. Rallying Cry gives him guard, which this is the only way he gets guard. You know, he doesn't get it from one move generically like Man at Arms does. And then Tenacity becomes just another good self-sustain tool. One important thing, too, between the two characters is that Crusader cannot make block plus, not without a trinket. So he is stuck with regular block, but better healing. So that's another difference between them. Then you have Banneret, which completely turns this character on its head. You know, instead of being up in the front, either being sustainable in a tank or burn focused or just, you know, generalist. The Banneret path makes him a backline support. Like he has a decent range option and zealous he can holy lance if he needs to but he loses a lot of his you know tanking capability since he can't use bulwark you know so if you're not putting him in the back it's just kind of a waste and so with this in mind since crusader can be a backline healer range damage dealer stress healer support stuff like that he can do a lot of stuff he gives up his tanking to do that for the most part actually i would say for the entire part whereas man at arms never really gives up his tanking and so I think that's an important distinction between them. And we'll talk about Man at Arms here. And so Man at Arms, regardless of his path, the base character, the play style, the goal does not change. People are flipping out about him getting his damage lowered. And I'm going to tell you, his damage is the least important thing that he has access to. It's nice to have extra damage, but his damage was always a footnote compared to the rest of what he can do. So whereas Crusader is a pretty decent support and helping out the team, healing people, keeping people in position since he can like move around with Holy Lance if he needs to. Man Arms can still, you know, fix positioning with a couple of his skills, but Man Arms is a tank and like an offensive like in terms of his skills and his capabilities, he's very disruptive to any enemy. Like he has an answer to almost every single fight or enemy in the game. Usually they're the same answer, but he is able to do that. Whereas Crusader, you know, if you're in the sprawl and there's burn resist, you know, he can't really do much if you're using the burn skills. Whereas Man at Arms just really has no bad matchups. There's no bad time to take this character and i would even say he's still the best character in the game it's either him or flagellant at this point after the uh the damage nerfs but like i said the damage wasn't super important it's like why do i say that so you still have crush they can self-heal that's always been a nice part about it 
you know, Rampart can still stun off of combo. Defender is one of the things I will point to when people say, oh, he got way weaker. I'll point to Defender. This is a triple guard block plus skill upgraded with no cooldown. And the base version is fine too. This guy has the potential to have a block token for every single hit he receives, depending on how hard he gets focused. So his ability to live is freaking nuts. He also has the ability to practically solo some bosses between strategic withdrawal and going into crush. He's very hard to kill. And so we have bolster as the other thing that people are probably going to think of because bolster got slightly nerfed. It doesn't take vuln off of the ally anymore. And people probably think, Oh yeah, now it sucks. And it's still probably the best stress heal in the game because it can do a net gain of four stress. And even if it misses that, he still gets block or block plus. So it's still very good. And then we have hold the line still insane. The fact that he can go from four to one and root himself there. He is never, ever out of position. Bello gets rid of Repost and Crit. Crusader can get rid of Crit now, but Bello still gets rid of Repost, which is a very hard to remove token. Retribution is another one people are going to say, oh, this ruined the character. And the reason I think that this is an incorrect statement is because a lot of the times when I talk about nerfing Retribution, I have been saying to get rid of the Taunt because the Taunt is the most ridiculous part of this move. It's the fact that he can guarantee that he gets two attacks for one button. That's really strong. And people said, oh, no, Shuff, we need the Taunt. Otherwise, you know, the move would suck. And so they took away the block. And people are saying the move sucks. I don't understand. He can still taunt so what did people want what did they expect and a lot of people are not understanding that man at arms got adjusted to be more fair he was the best character he wasn't nerfed at least to me for crusader's sake he was nerfed because he was the one that's totally out of bounds in terms of power level and so retribution was on the chopping block for that it didn't matter how they did it it just mattered that they did and it's not, it's a, it's still kind of worth the mastery point because you can still rotate retribution and defender and have, you know, a ton of block. You can still rotate retribution and stand fast and have a ton of block, right? He never loses his tankiness. And even then the block, you know, since that's the thing that got removed, you, you still use it every other turn because of the cooldown. So it's like, all you have to do is instead of in between retribution where you hit crush or bolster, now you sometimes hit bolster and that gives you block or sometimes you hit something like stand fast. It just opens up the things he can do. Whereas before between just bolster defender and retribution, he was just so brain off as a character and to an extent he still is, you know? So it just, it made him slightly slightly more like player required brain thinking that sentence made total sense right so i don't really think that he's necessarily a power creep the other thing too is since he's on the old pass system his paths don't change his goals so it's like he still has answers to every single fight in the game you know you have wanderer of course sergeant does the boss or whatever you're fighting have a movement mechanic great he doesn't care Bulwark, you know, if you want to squeeze out some extra damage, get a little extra taunt and maybe stun stuff on combo. Great. He has that. But, you know, it doesn't change defender and bolster. You know, he can still do these things at the same power level. And you go to Vanguard. Hey, there's all that damage that people are complaining that he lost. It came back because it's in a path and he can still do all the things he needs to do, which is defender bolster and his retribution hits a bit harder so this character honestly is fine i know people like to i don't know get upsetty spaghetti and think the sky's falling when anything changes 
And that's, that's just not the case here. You know, it's not like they removed Defender from his kit. That would be cause for alarm, but it's not. And in terms of the two of them, they don't even step on each other's toes. You know, if you want to run Crusader as your healer or as a damage dealer, Man-at-Arms can still do all the tanking and defending and stuff that you need. It doesn't really matter. You can run them both as tanks and then have like two squishy characters in the back just, you know, shooting stuff. So there's there's still a lot they can do. They work together and they can work apart. It's okay. I don't think that they are power creeping each other, which is what people are afraid of. And I understand. But I think people get a lot of ill intentions when they start thinking about that kind of stuff. Like, oh, this happened and they did it to like sell DLC and stuff. And I mean, anyone who's played this game since like DD1 or even the start of DD2 like this. I don't know, man. They have never done anything that raises the red flag that they might be scummy. You know, they sold even the DLC sold at a fair price, at least in terms of US dollars. So I don't know. That's what I got for now. Uh, I'll do another video where I compare Sahar to someone because that issue also comes up. But yeah, so thanks for watching. Let me know what you're thinking down below in the comments. It's okay if you disagree. It's okay if you don't think anything I said made sense. Don't be a jerk. And I'll see you next time.